Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Lee John Blackmore here, Super Easy Guitar. This week we're learning how to do bar chords, okay? I've had a few questions about this, so I thought I'd do a short tutorial. Let's zoom in and get straight into it. So one of the more difficult things to pick up on the guitar as a beginner would be bar chords. I was doing at the beginning uh, the Sultan's a Swing. By Dire Straits. And that's just one example. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of, of songs with bar chords. And what you've probably found is you've learnt your open chords. Hopefully you've learnt to transition between them smoothly. You may have even tried moving the chords. So you've got that sorted, but you keep on coming across these songs that have bar chords in them. So how do we start with the bar chords? Well, one thing I will say is, you know, I've heard so many excuses of people like, we just, I just couldn't get these bar chords no matter how much I tried. And you know what, even I remember learning them very clearly to this day because I remember they were difficult, okay, and it took me a good couple of months to really get my fingers around them okay so I'm just going to show you a few little things I'm not going to show you any song in particular but I'm going to show you a few chords that crop up and how to form them with good posture so you can work on them and hopefully master them uh, over a short period of time with with a, a decent amount of practice okay now it if you have small hands, you know, or big hands or whatever, you still have to work the dexterity in your hand, you know. Your hand's not going to be used to going into these kind of positions, so you have to work on that, all right? Everyone's hand's a little bit different, but I've had seven-year-olds playing bar chords, okay? And it's just putting everything into position, having the wrist at the right position, the thumb at the right position on the back of the neck, making sure the fingertips are in the correct position, making sure everything's ringing out. Because actually, I don't squeeze down that hard. Um, it's kind of a misconception. You have to really squeeze on these, on these bar chords. But anyway, let's get into it. So one that comes up quite often would be a B minor. Now, one of the first songs I ever learned was Hotel California by the Eagles. And it starts off with two bar chords. B minor, F sharp. Then it's kind of, ah, relief. A, E, G, D, E minor. And then it kind of resolves with uh, an F sharp. You, can say, you could play it with an F sharp seven as well. Either or. Okay. So let's have a look at that B minor. And what I'm doing, I'm effectively just playing an A minor shape. Anytime the root is on your A string, okay, you're going to have these shapes just moved up a position. So if you're playing an A minor as normal, okay, what I want you to do is where your first finger is, I want you to put your second finger. And where your second finger was, I want you to put your third finger. And where your third finger was, I want you to put your pinky. So effectively, you're still playing the A minor chord, but you've got this finger hanging over here, okay? Just doing nothing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna slide this chord. Okay, I'm not pushing down, I'm taking the pressure off. I'm sliding it one and two. So now my second finger is in the third fret on the B string, okay? And it sounds like this. That's kind of nice in itself, but we want this. Okay, so do you see what I did there? I just placed my first finger across the strings in the second fret. And now what I'm wanting to do, I'm wanting to get this note here, the second fret on the A string, and I want that to ring out, as well as the normal chord I've got here, but also this top E string on the second fret, okay? So effectively what I'm doing with this first finger, I'm covering 
the A string and the top E string. And then my second, third and fourth finger, they're still playing that A minor shape. Okay? Now you're going to find that quite tricky in the beginning. Look, just have a look where my thumb is there, okay? So as a rule of thumb, if you like, you have to imagine some guitars actually have a line on the back here, but you have to imagine in the middle of the fretboard on the back there's this imaginary line, okay? And your thumb is going to sit in the middle of that imaginary line. And what you're going to do, you're just going to put your first finger across the fretboard like so, okay? Now, what you don't want to do is use the flat of your finger. That actually comes a bit later on. So what you want to do here is kind of use this side of where your finger is. So when you put it down on the fretboard, I'm leaning, I'm turning my finger ever so slightly, not much at all, nothing extreme like this where my wrist becomes awkward. Ever so slightly, I'm putting the pressure on that side of my finger. Okay, not on the flat of my finger, on the side on that kind of, not directly on the side, kind of in between the flat and the side, like at 45 degree angle, I guess, okay? So the side of my finger, you know, if I'm pointing out like that, that side, that would be the 90, that would be the 90 there, the, the other flat, so we kind of want in between, okay? So that's where I'm pushing down, and that's just sitting just really close to the fret. So if you can do that with your finger, if you can cover all those strings with one finger and make them ring out, I mean you're halfway there. You might find you're squeezing and you want to put another finger on just to get things working and you're pushing down really hard. You don't have to do that, okay? Just you might end up with something like this. And that's okay, don't worry. Put the chord on as well and then You might end up with something like that, but as time goes and you keep practicing, eventually you'll get those strings to ring out. Now you're probably wondering, with the B minor, why is my finger overlapping this bottom E string? Well, even though it's touching it, I don't actually want to play it. I just want to either avoid the bottom E string or just dampen it. Most of the time I just avoid it, it's easier. So sometimes you'll see me slip my finger down a little bit so it's just touching the A string and then that bottom E ends up being muted. Okay, so and when you watch people on videos where they're putting their finger, sometimes you see people with their finger right up here. That's not ideal. Look at my at my wrist you know that wrist is really gonna egg so what you want to try and do is just take the relief out of it by just moving your thumb just slightly off that line okay so you can't you don't have to strictly have it on the middle of the line you know if you can straighten your wrist out I mean you see Hendrix used to kind of play like this you know with his thumb right over so he didn't actually do bars in the same way as we do okay because his hands were so big so as long as you can get those strings covered, all right? Now, that's the B minor. To go over to F sharp, it almost looks like the same chord. Well, it is actually the same chord, but what I've done, I've moved all of my fingers over one string. So my second finger was on the B string to do that. A minor. Now I've moved it over so it's on the G string and my third finger is on the A and my pinky is on the D. Now I'm barring all of the strings, okay? But most importantly, I just want to cover the bottom E, okay? The B and the top E. So now I'm wanting to play this bottom E string because that note there second fret on the E string, okay, 
So that note there, the second fret on the E string, is called F sharp. That's what gives us the note name. But I'm still playing this, it looks like an E, and actually if we move it down, it is an E. It's an E shape, or what you might hear called an E form. So we're forming that E shape, but what we're doing, like the B, we're bringing it up, so it goes from E to F, to F sharp, and we're barring down, and that note there is F sharp. And that's what gives it the chord name. If we wanted to make it an F sharp minor, all we do, we turn this E form into a minor form. And to do that, I remove my second finger, and it becomes a minor. That's a little bit harder because then there's more strings to press down with the bar. If I move that down there, you can see it's an E minor, right? You're probably used to seeing it like that. Okay. Minor. So what we're doing, we're just barring down to make it a major, make that look like an E again. There you go, and that's F sharp, okay? So if you move the whole thing down one, still an E form. Now my first finger's on the first fret. So I'm covering the bottom E, the B, and the E. This E shape is doing the rest. It's an F chord. Okay, you might see the F chord like that, or like that, okay? But all we've done, we've added on a couple of extra notes. Okay? So that's your first little introduction to playing bar chords. Now, once you've got these little forms here, you can move them around anywhere. So for example, that would be B minor. Look where I've got my thumb now, it's uh, my finger, sorry, it's on the A string as the root. I'm not playing the E string anymore. Now if I move it up one again, it becomes C minor. Move it up two, it becomes D minor. Move it up two, it becomes E minor. And so on. So if we go back to that F sharp that we did earlier, or F, we could go F sharp, second fret, third fret is then gonna be G. Now listen, it's exactly the same as the open chord. So it gives you a slightly different voicing. Okay, move it up two, it goes to A. Okay, A major. You're used to playing it like that. You see, it gives you a different voicing. Okay, it's really nice. I'm still playing this E shape, this E form. I've just moved it up because this root note here is A, therefore, the chord becomes A. So there you go. That's just a little introduction to doing bar chords. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. Please, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments box below, or you can send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. I'm on all these social media things, okay? So uh, if you haven't already subscribed, I do these lessons every week, and um, I'll see you again the same time next week. Enjoy. Thank you.